Let's present a second trigonometric substitution. Our general guideline is that if you see something that looks like this, the square root of x squared minus a squared, you might try using the secant x equals a times the secant of theta. And this is the picture you would have in the back of your mind. And we saw when we were looking at the sine substitution, the value of this picture when we're trying to convert from thetas back into x's. And I believe we'll witness that again in this example. In particular, let's try to find the following indefinite integral. One divided by x squared times the square root of x squared minus 4 dx. And if this isn't a trigonometric substitution problem, I don't know what else you would try. It doesn't seem like U substitution would work. Parts certainly doesn't work. We don't have powers of the sine or the cosine, so that's not it. Again, this there's a might here. There's no guarantee that because you see this square root, trigonometric substitution is the answer. But if it's not the answer, I don't know what the answer is. So we'll try letting x be a 2 times the secant of theta. That makes dx 2 times the secant times the tangent. And we will plug these in and see whatever we see hopefully something nice. So this dx goes on top, our two times our secant times our tangent. Thus, um, x squared, 2 squared, the secant squared, so 4 times the secant squared times the square root of, once again, 4 times the secant squared minus 4. We could cross off this secant and one of the secants down here. We probably will do that eventually. But for now, let's try to cope with this square root. I've said before that when you do a trig substitution, you expect to see the Pythagorean identity. 
Now the Pythagorean identity as we know it does not have a secant in it. And nevertheless, we are going to use the identity to simplify this. Here's how it's going to work. The sine squared plus the cosine squared equals one. Let's turn this one into a secant squared by dividing both sides of this equality by the cosine squared. That gives you the tangent squared plus one equals the secant squared. Ergo, the tangent squared is the secant squared minus one. So, That allows us to get rid of the square root, sort of. I'll have a word to say about this at the end of the video, but for now, the square root of four is a two, and we'll say that the square root of the tangent squared is the tangent. And now what simplifies? Our tangents go away, our twos go away, the secant turns this secant squared into just a secant. The secant is one divided by the cosine. So what we have left here is one divided by the secant one divided by one divided by the cosine is the cosine. The antiderivative of the cosine is the sine. And as we predicted, Having this triangle in the back of our mind came in handy. The sine is the opposite over the hypotenuse. So one fourth times the square root of x squared minus one divided by the hypotenuse x plus our constant of integration. However, Let's end this video with a comment 
that we did something fishy. We rewrote the tangent squared under the square root as the tangent. And it isn't the square root of the tangent squared is the absolute value of the tangent. Now, in the previous set of notes, um, we had the same thing in the sense that we had the square root of the cosine squared, but we put restrictions on theta to make the cosine be a positive. Here, there are restrictions on theta, in particular, for technical reasons, theta is assumed to be in this interval. But these restrictions don't make the tangent positive. So it could be that the tangent is negative, in which case not having those absolute values would be a problem. It seems like a lot of sources just kind of ignore this. I'm not too stressed about it except that I'll make the following statements. Suppose instead of taking a definite, and sorry, suppose instead of taking an indefinite integral, you are taking a definite integral. And suppose your limits are positive. If your limits of integration are positive, the square root of the tangent squared is just the tangent. So exactly like we did in this video. If our limits are negative, then the square root of the tangent squared is the negative tangent. In other words, it's the absolute value of the tangent. Take something that's negative, throw an absolute value here to make it positive. So in the work I was doing in the previous frame, well, the previous, the beginning of this video. It's not that the work I was doing was bad, but I did assume that this square root was the tangent. So I was assuming that x was positive.